You know, there's nothing like a little impromptu ghost town flat tracking at the 40 Mile Roadhouse. Welcome back to TSN's Motorcycle Experience as we continue our tour of the Yukon here on the Top of the World Highway. Now, we've been adventure sport touring on this Kawasaki, but there are certainly other ways to tour here in Canada. Take sport touring, for example. One of the best motorcycles for that job is Honda's venerable ST1100. This summer, the ST heads into its 11th year of production, and according to Honda officials, it's selling as well today as it ever has. Designed from the ground up to be both sporty and touring, the ST is powered by a transverse V4 engine that was purpose-built by Honda with an automotive approach. The emphasis here, torque and durability. In 1994, Honda added a second model with ABS and traction control. For this week's impression of the ST, we invited Ken Edick, a dedicated touring rider who owns both a Honda Goldwing and a Kawasaki Concourse, to sample the ST along with veteran racer Dave Grummet. Hey Ken, uh, while we're taking some refuge out of the out of the rain, I know you don't get a whole lot of rain on this bike. Tell me, uh, I know you just got back from Americade. Tell me how this motorcycle would fare at Americade. It's uh, it's a very popular uh, model at Americade. Uh, Americade being one of the uh, or is touted as the world's largest touring rally, meaning that uh, this is typically a gathering of people that do a fair amount of mileage as opposed to trailering their bikes type thing. That's and where this bike uh, excels is is the mileage. You bet. Uh, it, the the ergonomic position is very uh, very peaceful. There's no uh, stress points on your wrists or your back or your leg. Uh, there's a lot of uh, leeway in that positioning shuffle and the fairing uh, takes a lot of the brunt of high speed uh, distance off of uh, your upper chest, your arms, legs, very well protected. And on a day like today when we were running into some uh, significant rain, there's quite an envelope of protection uh, right down to your feet. And that's, that's a big plus when you're out there on the road for weeks at a time. Okay, now part of the, the, the neat thing about this motor and why this bike is so different, there's a lot of, you know, your flat six and your gold wing. The, the inline four, this thing is a V4 and it's not mounted like a VF800 this way, it's actually mounted V this way. So how do you think that? It works out great uh, in, in the handling. Uh, it's a very smooth riding bike. Um, and uh, I guess for the accessibility for some of the maintenance work you can do, it allows that part of the engine to be readily accessible once a little bit of plastic is taken off. But it, it affords uh, a very good performer and balance for, uh, for all kinds of riding. Yeah, one of the things I know, so we talked a little bit about it, is it doesn't rev very high. And I, I found, coming from a sport bike background, that I was always trying to just... W it never sounds like it's working, so I was always hitting the rev limiter at the yeah. first. I guess uh, I'm, I'm on the other side. Being into touring, uh, low, low revs for the long-term ride is what you're looking for to keep that noise level down. You don't want a drone uh, that can wear on you uh, hour after hour. And this is right in that same uh, ballpark, and you don't need to get the high revs to get the torque that this thing does. Now, unlike your Conquerors, which I think is a chain drive, is that correct? This one gets the power to the back. No, the Concourse is also uh, is shaft, shaft drive. Well? They're, that, that's the nice comparison on them. They're, they're shaft drive, liquid cooled, which is one of the things that a long distance tourer looks for. You want to be making it as maintenance free as possible because our goal is to get out there and cover the miles, not be making adjustments. So uh, with the kind of mileage I'm talking about, you only have to change the rear hypoid gear oil maybe once a year, even for the mileages we're talking. And liquid cooled adds to the longevity of the engine because it's always at that optimum operating temperature and doesn't have to go through the extremes of an air temperature. Yeah, and it's quieter drive. too. When For sure, on. yeah. That's, uh, that's one thing that a lot of people uh, can't get used to is uh, how quiet it is. It isn't reminiscent of what the, uh, the motorcycle sound is. Yeah, and with the shaft drive and with this, this uh, V4 design, do you find much torque? Kinda. Enough for the kind of uh, riding that I do. Again, we're not uh, typically a rider that's looking for zero to 60 performance. Our idea of, of a good drag race is from here to uh, Colorado. And this can do it because it's, it's set up for the mid-range torque. Not necessarily the torque off the line, but it's no slouch in that department either. Now, if you're going to do that kind of mileage, does this have enough capacity to... Uh to support you? It fits right in with, uh, with the whole concept. Um, the judgment for uh, saddlebag capacity is number one, can it house a, a full size helmet? Not a shorty, not a half helmet. And that's usually a standard for a good cubic capacity is can it house the, uh, the, the helmet? 
And in this particular one, it's a little deceiving because a, a little of the spacing is integrated within the, the confines of the bike. So from the outside or straight on the back, it may not look like it's capable of it. And yet uh, they have very good uh, uh, weatherproof latchings, which is uh, a plus. And within it, although it's got a, a few items in it right now, the helmet will be completely housed in that area. And that's just a judgment for comparing uh, storage. Okay, uh, with this bike, Honda's borrowed a little bit from its car technology. It offers both ABS, the uh, anti-lock braking system, and TCS, which you tell me is traction control. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a great feature. I haven't yet uh, convinced myself to uh, physically go out there and try the ABS, but I'm well aware of its merits uh, by using it in a car. And the traction control is building on that same um, mechanism by retarding the ignition should the back wheel start to uh, break loose under hard acceleration. Uh, not a feature that you see on a lot of bikes, and not one that I would have thought was uh, for somebody in the sport touring range. I would have yeah. thought uh, people that Honda have got a lot more horsepower. Or yeah, one that could Hayabusa easily or something apply like that. that. But uh, it's it's uh, the nice thing is is if you want that kind of uh, uh, freedom, you can override the system and go back to conventional and and uh, have the Still back do wheel your burnouts and wheelies yeah. and all those things you normally do on your. It's sport hard to tour. impress them if the back <laughs> wheel won't do the burnout that yeah. you were building up to. I'm a firm believer of, of the bikes that uh, if it's working well, leave it alone. Why change for the sake of change? And the fact that, yeah, 10 years, uh, virtually the bike is unchanged aside from color. Um, it, it's a fantastic bike. It does everything that I think they approach the market to do, and it does it very, very well. And I think to that uh, testament is the nice thing that there are bikes that have come and gone in much shorter period of time. This has stood the test of time because it's done right and done right the first time. And what minor flaws there may have been, I, I've been hard pressed to find any. And so it just keeps building on a fine, reputable machine and has uh, got a club, uh, ST Owners Club, um, which uh, enhances that by uh, letting them share the knowledge of, of a fine machine. All right, well, great. Thanks, Ken. Thank you.